Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about Love and Hip Hop um, Atlanta Season 5, Episode 5. The episode was petty as hell. And I know a lot of people is riding for Jocelyn, but she just making me not like her this season. I'm not with this petty bullshit that she's trying to... Uh, like she said, she's trying to secure her spot. That's what she said. Anyway... It started with her and Carly um, going at it or whatever. And her trying to blackmail Carly with that in empty-ass envelope. And I was with Carly, like, put it out there. It's nothing going to shock nobody. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised she put nothing out there about her. But I think it's probably about the whole situation where life has supposed to be married. I'm not sure. But I just know... Whatever she put out there about Carly, it wouldn't have been a shock. It's not going to be a shock. Girl, move on. Um, and you can tell that Carly was really hurt because she felt like she was really Jocelyn friend. And I felt like that too. Everybody knows like she was the only person that was willing to film with Jocelyn. Because if it wasn't for Carly, besides Stevie, who was Jocelyn going to film with last year? Nobody was fucking with her. Everybody said that she was on some shit with nobody dealing with her last year. Um, Carly was saying how she supported her and all this kind of stuff. And I don't know, petty ass Jocelyn just couldn't understand that concept or whatever. And then when um, Carly called her evil, like, I believe like, you are fucking evil as fuck. <laughs> like, but like I said, she told her she was trying to secure herself and... People going to stop coming at her, and she's going to put everybody out there. And I'm like, girl, this shit is stupid. Anyway, moving on. Kirk and his boring-ass showcase. I'm like, if you're going to have a showcase, and we understand this is supposed to be about your daughter, but you was having that showcase before your daughter, so why we didn't hear nobody else? We didn't hear nobody else besides his daughter and the dude she was rapping with. I'm not going to say she was bad. I'm just going to say, because I didn't give her that much attention, I'm just going to say she sounded like everybody else that's out right now. She sounded like the Miss Mulatto girl that was on JD's thing, so I'm just saying, like, it just seemed like everybody sounded like, um, so, anyway, after she performed, she wanted to know would they sign her, would they work with her, and all that kind of stuff. Rashida gave her feedback about, um... You know, she had to need to have more stage presence. She needs to project her voice more and stuff like that. So, whatever. Rashida didn't give a fuck about that girl. All she cared about was Kirk and Scrappy fixing their fake-ass relationship. They talked about it once again. Scrappy tell him how he feel once again. And this time, Kirk say he's sorry. Oh, I get it now. You know, come here listening to what he's saying and, you know, dealing with my daughter. And I'm like, but he's been saying the same thing every time. So why are you just now getting it now? Whatever. Um, they hug it out. Who cared? Anyway, um, Justin and Scrappy, they looking at venues for her video release thing or whatever and she was like we're gonna have this and we're gonna have that and then she was like and we're gonna have surprises and i'm drop bombs and i'm like another petty ass segment that i just was over like once she start talking about being petty it just tunes me out like oh shit here we go again she's about to say the same fucking thing that she said the last time and that's exactly what we kept getting she was saying the same fucking thing over and over about how she got these punk ass bombs and they start talking about kk and she called kk a hoodlum and all this kind of stuff talking about they supposed to be sisters and then she just straight out acts now i will say what i did i hey she straight asked y'all in each other's face, like, did y'all fuck? I heard y'all fuck before in the past. Did y'all fuck? And they both say, no, you know, that's been my brother for the last 15 years, and yada, yada, yada. And he was like, I've been around him since they was in the Rascals. And I'm like, that don't mean you didn't fuck her. I'm just saying. I mean, I'm not saying he did fuck her, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't want people to think once people call people their brothers or whatever that, you know, they fucked or it's a possibility of them fucking, no, not going to happen. Because there's a lot of people out here 
in Vegas that's in the industry that I call my brothers and I look at them exactly like my brothers. What and they might be cute, but once I call you my brothers, you ugly as shit. All y'all look the same. Like there's nothing I see in you. So I don't want people to think because when girls say, Oh, that's my brother, that they really trying to smash them on the side. That's not the fucking case at all. Um but KK was mad as shit. She was like, man, uh, any other time I will fuck this bitch up, but I'm worried about some other shit right about now, so I ain't got time for this shit. We'll deal with her later. We'll let her have a pass for this one right here. And I'm like, mm, okay, she's talking about the next time her teeth gonna be out. I said, well, I wish we get to the next time so I can see if y'all is hard as what y'all be saying, because I hate for a bitch to be just sent out in the confessionals and then you let her do some shit again the next time. I'm just saying. Um... Stevie and KK end up talking about the whole situation with Scrap and Tierra and the beef with KK. And KK still saying, I ain't fucking with that bitch. Um, ain't gonna happen. But Stevie was telling her, it's not about her. It's about the grandson. And it's about this boy spending time with his dad. It's not about her. And like, if everybody gonna get on Tierra, get on KK too. Bitch, it's not about you. Put your pride aside. It's about your grandson needing to be around his father. More so now, because you don't know if he going to go to jail. So, y'all need to, if that's what the mama wants, just have her sit down and talk to you. Have her sit down and talk to her so the boy can be around his father. Because you never know how long he's going to be going away. And you don't want him to come back and not know the man. You know what I'm saying? Because the mama is going to have that ability to keep him away from the the family. So, whatever. I'll get into some other shit, she said, because I'm tired of this bitch want to go to court. Um, moving on from that, Mimi the maid, that's what Jocelyn called her, my bad. Mimi the maid and Jocelyn go furniture shopping. Another, once again, Jocelyn being petty as fuck. But she gonna say, I heard you got a B-I-T-C-H. I heard you got a girlfriend. And Mimi like, yeah, she gonna say, after our long... Our lovely night together. And I'm sitting there like, girl, stop acting like you turned her out. That bitch, like Stevie said, they had a lot of threesomes. Just saying. So please stop acting. She probably had a lot of them with Nico, too. So stop acting like you turned this girl out. Um, She invites Mimi to the uh party and invite her girlfriend and say she inviting everybody. And Mimi is like, bitch, what you mean everybody? Because every, when she say everybody... Everybody look at her dumb because we all know everybody don't like her. So why would you invite everybody to your party knowing nobody likes you? Um, oh, we can be, let, let's be the examples because we didn't used to get along and whoop, whoop, whoop. And I'm with Mimi like, bitch, please. Like, stop acting like you this new Jocelyn, but you steady saying that you got bombs and you steady on this petty shit, but then you say you want everybody, show everybody you can still be classy in the room together and drink. Why? Because nobody have nothing on you, but you have everything on everybody else. That's dumb. Whatever. Um, I just was over her. Then she brings out all of KK's background and give it to Mimi. And you know, it's all about what they did to the the uh, stepfather and the America Most Wanted and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, bitch, we knew about this four episodes ago. Just saying. Um, so, yeah. Even Mimi was just like, yeah, this is the Jocelyn I knew. The petty bitch. This is the one I knew. Scrap is with his brother Sass. His brother's performing some song called I'm a Dog and he should take that song back and bury that shit with some bones. Like that song was horrible. The boy that was singing the hook was horrible. I don't know. Did we need to be in there so we could have got a better sound? I <sighs> Please take that song some fucking where else. Horrible. Horrible. Was Dala y'all <laughs> y'all everything of the group? Cause <laughs> I'm just saying. That shit was horrible. The last time we seen him in a studio doing some shit, it was it sounded the same. Horrible. Whatever. So, after he performed, Scraps tells Sass that he's proud of him. That Then they talked about Dollar and Dollar birthday, I think, was coming up. And they were all going to go to the cemetery. KK's going to go to the cemetery. 
she's never been and all this kind of stuff then they talked about kk and tiara's beef and about the son and then next thing you know kk walks in kk walk in scrap try to leave but sass was like no we're gonna all talk we're gonna sit down and they start talking about dollar like i said once again um sass was saying we gotta spot this beef because of dollar i'm just sitting there like why why are y'all putting all this on this boy and he dead? Stop. Um, and I bet you dollar, like, immediate family probably said, stop using my motherfucking brother, cousin, whatever, as a storyline. Like, come on. Like, y'all not using his name in no good vein with this bullshit y'all got going on. Um, KK, she's still talking about she ain't gonna talk to her. She'll take her to court because she got grandparent rights. And I'm like... So you really, really, really wants to go to court when you was on America Most Wanted. Like fucking Scrap said, every time he go to court, his world get turned upside down. And I do not see that shit going in his favor, his mama favor, his brother Sass favor, whoever else in their family to try to get some kind of visitations with this baby. I don't see it fucking happening. And you know, side note, apparently he did have a third girlfriend because I saw a new baby in some pictures. I'm just saying. And that little baby looked at like he was probably under a year or a little bit over a year. Mm. Cute little boy, but I'm just saying. Anyway, me, me and Chris, stay at the house and they're talking about, you know, uh, she's having a housewarming party and she tells her that the Jordans are back. All of a sudden, Chris gets in her feelings that the Jordans is back. And I'm sitting there like, um, didn't you know about them? Like, all this year the child been dating. So, regardless of they being in another state, she still has to deal with them. I, but she, you know, and my thing is, why are you just now knowing that they cool? If y'all been dating a year, and we seen Mimi go be on their show... Why are you just now acting like it's a surprise that they cool and they cordial and stuff like that? I didn't understand if y'all been together for a minute. That's why people is talking about y'all punk ass relationship now. So, anyway, what irritated me about this girl when she said, I don't know how to deal with baby daddies. Bitch, where you think Eva came from? So, you knew that she had this history with these people you knew she had a baby you knew the baby had to come from a baby daddy and you still chose to get with her so bitch even if she didn't get along with fucking stevie you still would have to deal with stevie when eva lives with the mama so that means you on some petty bullshit that i don't see this relationship lasting I don't even see a relationship lasting another two episodes. I really, really don't because I didn't get this. I don't understand why she thought she was going to have me, me, and Eva all the way to herself. Like, Stevie was just all the way out the picture. Like, this bitch just wasn't on Stevie's show. Whatever. Then they talked about her meeting Jocelyn at the party. She's skeptical about that, talking about people put her hands on me, me, and all that kind of shit. And I'm sitting there like, whatever. Tommy goes over Scrap's house with this thot ass outfit on. Looked it fucked up. Talking about that was some lingerie. She needs to throw it back to whoever lingerie store she got that from. It w <sighs> That shit just looked like a whole outfit. Like, no. No, I don't know who sold her that. I... Whatever. She didn't even have on the right jacket for that outfit, but whatever. She goes to his house and goes just storming in talking about where that bitch at? Where that bitch at? Y'all gonna stop going to people's house screaming where that bitch at? Because what if that bitch would have came around a corner with a bat and hit your ass? What if she would have came around a corner and stuck your ass? Like, Bitch, you had on fucking high heels and a dot outfit. You would have got fucked up if she would have came around there and charged your ass like a football player. Like, girl, boo. Then I'm like, he acting like he didn't know it was about to be a scene. Because I'm like, you had cameras on both sides. 
I'm just saying. You had cameras at the doors waiting on her to knock on the door for you to get to the door. Shut that. Y'all, I told y'all editing is fucked up. Um, then she, you know, she's like, Jocelyn told me about you having this ugly bitch. And, he, and then she started crying. And I'm like, here we go with this shit again. Here we go with this bitch and I'm taking her medication once a fucking again. Like, I'm not crying. Scrap, you better leave this bitch alone for she sliced your fucking throat in your sleep. I'm just saying. That bitch is crazy. Um, Then she told me, he got me out here looking dumb. No, bitch, you got yourself out there looking dumb. When the next bitch tells you he got a bitch, what you going over there looking for? You should have just counted your loss when you found out about Tierra, but you kept on trying to fuck with him. So, what's the problem? I, you got yourself looking dumb. Tell me, fuck you, fuck you, all your fake ass family, your mama, your. I'm like, goddamn. Now fuck KK. When I was your homegirl, like, that, that's who you should be mad at. Cause KK started this goddamn shit. Put some in your ear, and you ain't been able to sit down you since. I'm just saying. I want to see her confront KK. She talking about fuck your fake ass mama and all that kind of stuff. Go go confront her. I want to see how that shit ends. Um, whatever. So, that was that with them and they stupid. Oh, no, that wasn't that with them. This bitch runs out and tries to get in the Enterprise truck coming down the street. I was just like... And the producer's like, no, keep going. No, keep going. And she just running down the street. I'm like, she is giving me that tease when homegirl found out that Miles was gay on Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. That's what she gave me. I was just like, oh, my God. Scrappy Scrap, Kurt, Stevie J, Jock, some other dude. They all go paintball fighting in the little woods. Look like they was having a really, really nice time. I can give them that. Stevie talk about how he back because of his family, his kids, his daddy, yada, yada, yada. Then they start talking about Scrap because he said, meet me and Jocelyn cool. So they start talking about Scrap and his baby mama situation. Jock happy he ain't going through this shit no more. Whatever. And so Scrap started telling him all about his bullshit. And then he was like, uh, and your bitch is the one told her, he told her all about the whole situation with Tommy coming to the house and, you know, blame Jocelyn. And Stevie is like, what the fuck? Like, why would she do that? Why is she all up in your business? And Scrap is like, shit, I'm trying to find out the same motherfucking thing because this bitch is crazy. But whatever. Um... He going to say, let's address it at the function. And I like how Scrap was like, I don't want to address it at the function. You know how family is? They're fighting. So, I I agree with Scrap, but y'all need a storyline, so y'all going to address this shit at the goddamn place. Mimi has a housewarming. All the ladies is there except Chris, because Chris don't want to be at no ladies, no thing. Okay, whatever. Bitch, it ain't your house, so you don't need to be there anyway. Jocelyn not there because nobody liked Jocelyn. And she was like, shit, I had to make a decision. Either me and Jocelyn be in his house or me and a lot of people. So, a lot of people won. Mimi tells them how, oh, she invited Tierra because she feel like Tierra need a friend. Tierra say how she apologized. She tells them her backstory about Tommy and all that kind of bullshit. So, they kind of selling Tierra now. Um, they say how the Jordans are back, and they cool, and how they having a video release party, and everybody invited, and everybody said, hell fuck no, we ain't fucking with that bitch, that bitch is crazy. Tammy said, that bitch wants to fuck my face up. That bitch is like a bitch from school where you see a pretty girl and you want to cut their face. And I was like, yeah, she was gonna fuck you up if she would've got close. I'm just saying. Um, then they start talking, to Carly comes by, and... You know, they talk to Carly about it, and Carly lets them know about Jocelyn and her blackmail, and they like, are you surprised, bitch? <laughs> like, she crazy. But nobody says they're going to her party, so that's that. Um, Jocelyn has her party. Nobody's there but, like, Kirk and them. None of the girls are there but Mimi and her girl. And Jocelyn just straight goes in. Jocelyn starts talking about, hey, girl. Who is this young lady? I said, so Chris got offended by that. Then she also got offended. Talking about, I thought I was your girlfriend. I was like, Jocelyn is being very disrespectful. Very. 
Chris, the girl should have came out of you because, you know, I don't condone boys beating on girls. And since you say you're a boy, I'm trying to give you that. But the girl should have came out of you and slapped the fuck out of Jocelyn. Jocelyn was very, very disrespectful. I don't care what nobody say. I didn't find that funny. I didn't find that cute or nothing. She was very disrespectful for that girl. Regardless of you trying to be funny and you get airtime or whatever, it was disrespectful. She going to say... Um, she, she got better tongue actions than I do. And I'm sitting there like, really? I, Chris was way better than what I, I have would have reacted to Jocelyn. She really, really did. And, you know, all you could do is commend her for that because you kept it real cute and classy because I would have kept it the way Jocelyn wanted it to be kept. I would have kept it real gutter and hood and would have knocked that bitch up off her heels. I'm just saying. But I got to go, y'all. My battery about to die. If y'all can tell my light and went down. <laughs> but, yeah, um, I got to go. So, I'll talk to y'all later. That's my review for my Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. Uh, I mean, <laughs> y'all know I'm tired. Love and Hip Hop Atlanta Season 5, Episode 5. Make sure you're checking out my YouTube fam out there. doing Love and Hip Hop like Ashley Miller might be. Um... I'm tired, so I can't remember who else. Forest Rocks, Bondi Blue, all of my YouTube fam. It's all about support, so I'm supporting everybody. And I'll talk to y'all on the next video. Yep, looking ratchet at all. I told y'all, with this show, I'm not getting dressed up. Not going to happen. All right, y'all. Peace.